Myself, Dr. K. Vishnu Alamrandu, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Dundigal, Hyderabad. In this class, we are going to study the revision of principal stresses. What is the principal stress? Principal stresses are the normal stress. What is the principal stress? Principal stresses are the normal stresses. On the planes where the shear force equal to zero. Suppose if we consider a body, a plane body having a rectangle of uh, that is ABCD, on which the axial stresses are sigma x in x axis and sigma y along y axis. And there is a plane making an angle of theta with the vertical surface of PBC. This plane is known as oblique plane. Or uh, another name is called inclined plane. Inclined plane. On this oblique plane, if the shear stress equal to zero, on which the normal stresses are known as the principal stresses. If the normal stresses are known as principal stress, sigma m. So the shear stress on this plane equal to zero, that plane is known as that plane is known as principal plane principal plane again principal planes are the planes on which shear stress equal to zero principal stresses are the stresses on the principal planes the normal stresses on the principal plane known as principal stresses. There are two types of principal stresses. Principal stresses are two types. Principal stresses are two types. Again, number one, major principal stress major or maximum principal stress or maximum maximum principal stress another one is minimum principal stress minimum principal stress Here, the principal stress on the major principal plane is known as maximum principal stress. The principal stress on minor principal plane is known as minimum principal stress. There is another shear, st there is another stress is known as complementary shear stress. Complementary shear stress. Complementary shear stress. This complementary shear stress is denoted by tau xy or tau yx. What is the meaning of tau xy? Tau xy means in the direction of tau xy on tau xy and tau yx. Tau xy means it is in the direction of the x axis, in the x direction along the y plane. Now, how to denote here? This is x direction and it is y direction. 
or it is x direction and it is y direction. Tau xy is denoted by on the x tau xy is denoted here. It is direction x, but actually it is on it is on the plane y. Here tau xy is denoted here. Now here these are the complementary shear stress. To maintain the equilibrium, to maintain the equilibrium, the complementary shear stress tau xy. This tau xy x tau xy is denoted here. To maintain the equilibrium, to maintain the equilibrium of these complementary shear stresses. We have to use another on different on another planes to balance. But here the tau xy equal to tau ax. The complementary shear stress is remains the same. If the plane is subjected to if the plane is subjected to direct shear stresses or at direct stresses in x direction and in the y direction and also the complementary shear stresses are acting and also the complementary shear stresses are acting and also the complementary shear stresses are acting tau y x tau x y equal to tau y x both are equal and having on incline having a making an angle theta this oblique plane is an angle of theta so how to find out the sigma n and the tau on the oblique plane on the oblique plane the sigma n and the tau can be calculated on the oblique plane by using equilibrium equations along the normal direction to the oblique plane and tangential to the oblique plane tangential to the oblique plane this is tau normal to the oblique plane it is sigma n the sigma n along this x axis the sigma y sigma x sigma x and the sigma y we have to resolve the sigma x and sigma y normal to oblique plane and parallel to the oblique plane similarly complementary shear stress also to be resolved along normal to the oblique plane and parallel to the tangential plane up tangential to the oblique plane then sigma n equal to the normal stress on the oblique plane comes in terms of sigma x sigma y and tau xy that is sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus sigma x minus sigma y by 2 cos 2 theta plus tau xy sin 2 theta and tau equal to sigma x minus sigma y by 2 sin 2 theta minus tau xy cos 2 theta here this sigma x sigma y the sigma x plus sigma y by 2 is the average stress and sigma x minus sigma y by 2 cos 2 theta plus tau xy sin 2 theta. This is the resultant portion. Now the sigma n and the tau, the formulas for this and what is this theta? Theta is the inclination of oblique plane. Now as I mentioned that, if you want to calculate the principal stresses, 
we need the oblique plane inclination inclination of the oblique plane that inclination angle is such a way that where shear stress should be equal to zero if we equate this tau equal to zero from this if we calculate then say what will happen if tau equal to zero then the angle of inclination will come theta that theta gives the inclination of the angle of the plane on which the normal stress the, on which the shear stress equal to zero that means that the plane is known as a principal plane the stresses on the principal plane is known as principal stress so why should we study this principal stresses and principal planes we will study after calculation now sigma x minus sigma y by 2 sin 2 theta equal to tau xy cos 2 theta as we calculated here sigma x minus sigma y by 2 sin 2 theta equal to tau xy cos 2 theta then sin 2 theta by cos 2 theta equal to tau xy by sigma x minus sigma y by 2 that means 2 times tau xy by sigma x minus sigma y this is left hand side it becomes tan 2 theta then 2 theta equal to tan inverse of 2 times tau xy by sigma x minus sigma y this angle of inclination this 2 theta from this theta can be calculated then theta equal to 1 by 2 times tan inverse of 2 times tau xy by sigma x minus sigma y this theta equal to 1 by 2 times this 2 times tan inverse of 2 times 2 tau xy by sigma x minus sigma y2 this theta is the angle of principal plane angle of oblique plane okay after calculating this theta substitute back after knowing tan 2 theta one more term we can calculate by using Pythagoras theorem what is sin 2 theta and what is cos 2 theta in terms of sigma x sigma y and complementary shear stress now now here how can we calculate here sigma x minus sigma y we know that tan 2 theta equal to 2 times tau xy by sigma x minus sigma y now right angle triangle if we consider it what is tan terms tan theta that is opposite side by adjacent side this is 2 times tau xy opposite adjacent is sigma x minus sigma y what is hypotenuse the diagonal side will come the diagonal side equal to opposite side under square root of opposite side square plus adjacent side square that is sigma x minus sigma y square plus 4 tau xy this is the angle of inclination 2 theta from this sine 2 theta sine 2 theta equal to opposite side by diagonal side that is 2 times tau xy by sigma x minus sigma y square plus 4 times tau xy under square root from this again cos 2 theta cos 2 theta equal to sigma x minus sigma y by sigma x minus sigma y whole square plus 4 times tau xy square this sine term and cos term substitute back in the equation of in the equation of sigma n what is that equation of sigma n sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus sigma x minus sigma y by 2 cos 2 theta plus tau xy 
sin 2 theta. Substitute back here the cos 2 theta and the sin 2 theta here. Sigma x minus sigma y by 2. What is the cos 2 theta term? The cos 2 theta sigma x minus sigma y by this term substitute here. That is sigma x minus sigma y by that is 4 times tau square xy plus tau xy times what is the sin 2 theta term that is 2 tau xy by and the square root of sigma x minus sigma y whole square plus 4 times tau square xy. So from this equation we can find out the major and minor or maximum principal stress and minimum principal stresses can be calculated from this equation. If you simplify it, this sigma x minus sigma y whole square by 2 times, yeah, then again 4 times, then what will happen if we make it LCM and simplification, then we can get the values of sigma 1 and 2. So sigma 1 and 2 means sigma 1 and 2. That means sigma 1 is the major principal stress or maximum principal stress and sigma 2 is minimum principal stress. This is maximum principal stress. Maximum principal stress occurs on a maximum principal plane. Minimum principal stress occurs on a minimum principal plane or minor principal plane. Maximum principal stress occurs on major principal plane and minimum principal stress occurs on a minor principal plane. So in that manner, we will calculate the normal stress or principal stresses and on a principal plane this method is known as this method is known as analytical method is known as analytical method so this is the analytical method procedure to find out sigma n that means major principal stress or principal stress and tau shear stress value calculations by using analytical method. There is another method is known as graphical method. Graphical method. What is the graphical method? So before going to study the graphical method, we have to know the sign conventions of the stresses. Sign conventions. Sign convention means, suppose on the plane, the axial stresses sigma x, sigma x along x axis, sigma y along y axis. Now it is the angle of oblique is theta. Here the sigma x and sigma y are Tensile stresses are acting on the plane in axis X and axis Y. So if the tensile stresses means that consideration will consider as a positive. If the direction is positive, we will consider positive. If it is compressive, sigma X is compressive stress, sigma Y is a tensile. That means sigma x considered as negative, sigma y is considered as positive. And another manner, these are the sign conventions for the axial stresses. So what are the sign conventions for complementary shear stresses? The complementary shear stresses, if we consider on the plane 
about x axis sigma x it is in clockwise direction the clockwise the clockwise with respect to the x axis that means this complementary shear stress is positive if it is in counter clockwise direction sigma x is a tensile and counter clockwise direction that is tau xy this counter clockwise is considered as negative shear stress or negative the negative on what basis we are considering in positive with respect to the planes this is a plane consideration on the phase where sigma x is acting sigma x sigma x is acting then it is if it is in clockwise direction then it is the positive shear stress it is in counter clockwise direction it is a negative shear stress so these sign conventions are very important in a graphical method and also in analytical method to find out sigma n and tau now let us consider the graphical method in the graphical method there are graphical method which are going to use that method is known as morse circle method or morse method in this morse circle method morse circle method is the name of the scientist uh, he has found he found this method in order to calculate sigma n and tau is a very easy method so that method is that suppose we are going to consider the case one what is the case one sigma x is acting in tensile sigma y is also in tensile the angle of oblique plane is theta we have to find out on this oblique plane what is sigma n and what is tau it is very easy method consider the scale sigma x and sigma y sigma x and sigma y values in a linear scale means sigma x in the in pascals or in newton per meter square sigma y also in newton per meter square consider the value of the sigma x in terms of centimeters suppose if sigma x example if sigma x equal to 20 newton per meter square what is the scale you have to consider 5 newton per meter square equal to 1 cm that means then sigma x becomes in terms of centimeters the value converted value become 4 cm similarly sigma y now take a line and that any arbitrary point you consider as a o from that arbitrary point make a horizontal distance that is sigma x distance the value of the sigma x it is sigma x the value of the sigma x mark it as this is l it is a tensile is the positive zone positive direction if it is compressive we have to go in negative direction this is the negative direction according to sign convention compressive stress considered as negative tensile stress is considered as positive next what is the sigma y value take from point to o in terms of sigma y considered as sigma y this sigma y is m this is the l m and l and take midpoint of this ml that is the midpoint is n and take with the help of the compass consider the radius nl or nm nm radius draw a circle 
ड्राई ए सर्किल ड्राई ए सर्किल ड्राई ए सर्किल दट सर्किल इज नोन एज मोर्स सर्किल मोर्स सर्किल now this nl take the reference of nl with this reference line consider the oblique of oblique plane inclination theta make it an ang angle of 2 theta here this is 2 theta now after knowing this point intersecting the mohr circle that point is the p now project this point On a OL line, x OL line, this point you mark it as a Q. Now, the OQ distance gives the value of sigma n. The QP distance gives the value of the tau. And if you measure the plane. the distance op join o to p line o to p this line indicates the value of resultant stress and this resultant stress sigma r making with ol that angle is known as phi that is angle of obliquity the angle of obliquity means the angle made by the resultant stress with ol now resultant stress sigma r equal to this is a right angle to triangle now sigma r equal to tau square plus sigma n square r that is op square equal to OQ square plus QP square. Then OP equal to under square root of OQ square plus QP square. What is this OP? The resultant stress. What is the resultant stress? Sigma n is the normal stress on the oblique plane, where tau is the shear stress on the oblique plane. This sigma n gives the principal stress value. Okay, directly we can measure it. So this is the case where we considered here more. So we considered the axial stresses which are in mutual perpendicular to each other. Now there is another case on which the complementary shear stress also. Occurs. How to calculate that method? How to find out sigma n and tau? Sigma x is acting. Sigma y is also the angle of inclination is theta oblique plane is, and it is tau x tau y x, and here it is. tau x y so we for this condition how to find out the normal stress sigma n and tau sigma n and tau how to find out sigma n and tau now here by using the mohr circle method consider the scale consider the scale linear scale convert this sigma x in terms of linear scale and make a point o on any vertical line draw a horizontal distance that is sigma x it is sigma x value is the point l similarly sigma y consideration this is sigma y after this ol this is marked as m om take a midpoint m and l 
take a midpoint of ml and draw a circle that we have drawn by using sigma x and sigma y now how to do it here it is complementary shear stress was given in that complementary shear stress draw a perpendicular line from l it is in clockwise positive tau xy is the tau xy distance is the p similarly m2 another that is q uh, this is p you can consider s join p and s intersects at this point n then take a radius of take a radius of ns or np draw a circle from this angle of inclination from np is the base where consider 2 theta angle of inclination 2 theta angle of inclination draw a line incline, inclined line draw an inclined line that is 2 theta Pro this is mark it as a point P. Now project this point P on a horizontal line Q. Now the distance OQ gives sigma n. If you measure the linear distance from QP gives tau. The OP gives sigma r and the angle of inclination of sigma r with ol that gives angle of obliquity so sigma n is the value the distance from o to q tau is the shear stress on the oblique plane that is pq distance and op gives sigma r that is the resultant stress that is op the angle of inclination of OP with OL, that is the phi, the angle of obliquity. Angle of obliquity. So, in that manner, we can, we can find the normal stresses or we can find the normal stress on oblique plane by using Morse circle method. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.